So uh, my dad gave me a Brownie camera, I guess, when I was about eight years old, and uh, I just fell in love with it. There was just something about it, you know. I just loved to take pictures, and took a great number of pictures. I started to enter a lot of photography competitions. I won first, second, and third in all the categories, which led to a show at the Kodak Exhibition Center. And it was during that show that I met uh, Arthur Rothstein, who was the director of photography for Look Magazine. So Arthur said, gee, uh, you know, maybe you can come help me, you know, learn how to do a story a little bit, love my cameras, watch what I do. And I said, great, and I assisted him a couple of times. And then when the, uh, the funeral, the Kennedy funeral happened, uh, he said, gee, come down and help, and I did, and I, got, and I worked my way up to St. Matthew's Church and climbed up on some stuff and was able to, to make that uh, picture of John John saluting the coffin. Attica, uh, well, a lot of stuff led up to Attica. You know, I started out, when I started out in the beginning, you know, I was, I was well, always covering the movement. Attica Prison Riot was just starting. And uh, the uh, inmates asked if I would come in and tell their side of the story. They wanted someone there to tell their side of the story. And so I was uh, lucky enough to get inside the prison. I did a story, uh, went to Philadelphia, uh, Mississippi, to cover the story about the three young the civil rights workers that got killed. And uh, a buddy of mine said to me, hey, Johnny, you know, I think you should get yourself a gas mask. And I carried it with me for years. While I had that with me, the thing that we did during those days, really, was we had a little bottle that you, you poured uh, vinegar into and put cotton into it. And you always had that in your shirt pocket or in your top jeans pocket. And so when you got into situations and there was going to be tear gas, you would just take that cotton and you'd put it in your nose and it would keep your eyes clear so you could see what you were doing. I guess I started to take some pictures of Muhammad Ali that when he fought uh, Sonny Liston for the second time. And Sonny Liston was a gruff kind of thug, <laughs> you know, of a heavyweight champion. But he was a very inarticulate guy, but he had this, he, he, he said this great thing about Muhammad. He said, fighting Muhammad Ali is like wearing a gasoline raincoat and running through a fire. So, you know, that's kind of my first initial experience with Ali. And then, you know, I, I, when he came back, when he, you know, tried to come back and regain the championship, I did the pre I, know, I guess about five or six years ago, I decided, gee, this is fun, but I've done enough magazines. I love magazines, but after coming, coming up over about a couple hundred of them, you know, I said, gee, it would be fun to, to go back and take pictures again and to write again. So that's kind of where I find myself now.